Good morning everyone. Um, as you know I've got quite a few phones and I like to have one of the places where I show these phones to be made changeable. So uh, we'd have a different phone on for say a couple of months and then change it to another one. All the other phones are just left as they are. But the one in the hallway, I've made so it, it can be changed, as I say, every, every couple of months. Anyhow, this time I thought it was a uh, uh, have a little change and also have a little talk about it. Um, I might have put this, this phone up before, I probably have. I'm not showing the innards this time, just a bit of information concerning this style of phone. Now, as you can see, got the normal handset there, this was obviously based on the GPO, British Telecom, 706 version, which was their uh, telephone they brought out in, I believe, about the 1960s, maybe the late 50s, but definitely the 60s. It was the phone that I grew up with when I joined the uh, the company in the early 60s, that was the phone. And at that time, there was box loads of 332s, which were being scrapped. Obviously a great pity now, because these 332s can fetch a lot of money. But that's a bit of history, and of course everyone wanted the 706 style phone. Now, not all these phones are in fact 706s. The one we're looking at now, all right, it looks like a 706, based on the 706, manufactured by perhaps the same firm that also manufactured genuine 706s. But this one, was slightly different. Let me show a little bit closer. Have a look at the dial. There's the dial. Certainly not the standard dial. It's a very smooth running dial. Another little clue, I say clue, although these were used on, our, on the 706s, is a little volume control in the handset. The handset is the normal 706 style handset with the, in, the inserts also being the same. One difference, these ones had a carrying handle made of metal. So these carrying handles were very good. It meant that you could lift the phone up and not end up with a phone on the floor with the, the plastic handles which in some cases snapped and let the phone go. But these are a nice solid metal chromed strip. The press button there is an extra which can be used to either switch the bell off or on. In this case it is not used where it doesn't appear to be used it might have been used for super, supervisory purposes on switchboards anyhow i say switchboards because this phone was never used on bt gpo lines if it was connected to the gpo lines which was illegal at the time there was a special relay so i was told used to come in uh, and prevented it being connected to the post office lines. So this was used either inter office, between offices on private lines, in a factory. Although this one doesn't look like it was in a factory, it looks like it's, it was obviously well kept and um, kept up. There's a bit of wear. If you look at the handset. 
see a little bit of wear there which you'd expect to find and this is due to the handset being placed on the rest let's turn him around here we get another clue ATE automatic telephone and electric now this surprises me because automatics made their own dial a worldwide dial I would say this is obviously a variant if you look at the um, spacing between the finger stop and the first on, on, on the digit O there is a slight space there so I've probably shown you this dial in another video but I would suspect that very much so this was based very much on the automatic electric dial which incidentally was not used by uh, the GPO it was used by other companies the Indian telephone in industries the phones that went to Portugal they did use this automatic dial and as I said in the past always tell you've got a space between that and that perhaps a slightly bigger space than you've got here so this is also a quick way of telling whether you're getting a genuine GPO 332 or one of the other ones which were genuine it just happened to be made for a different country anyhow let's have a look at the back I shall show you the colours obviously the colour of this is quite unique um, alright we see where the colour has been altered by years of sunlight this as far as I'm concerned is natural and is all is uh, is part of the aging also I didn't mention at the time the dial has only got numbers once again this would indicate uh, an internal phone as it didn't need to have num uh, it didn't need to have letters because at that time we were changing over to all figure numbering in the post office and let's let's have a look at the base here we have the standard plastic type base that you would find on the 706 this is virtually the same the only difference is one of these screw holes has been blanked off but everything else looks in the same place with your little feet the rubber's gone hard in some places but you'd expect that with age so there's the back there's no date on this there is look carefully a number it looks like n1 so so the one or i n1901 cb 48t and if that's looked up you'll get more information concerning this phone uh, these numbers do occur elsewhere and um, they can be easily checked up but you would definitely find that this is one of the phones manufactured by ATM or automatic telephone electric as they were also known as a branch of automatic electric from America which goes back to our good old undertaker Strouger who started the firm up in Kansas many years ago any, any questions on this please ask I haven't showed it ringing or anything like that um, it does ring and the 
volume control also works because when you get to my age the old ears are not as good as they used to be so it's nice to be able to turn the volume up to just hear the scam calls which mainly comes through these phones people trying to scam you um, so you can hear them and um, you can give your answer or just put the handset down but a nice phone to have in the collection I often term these as 706 clones all right they are a clone but normally they are quite well made circuitry inside did vary some of them I don't know about this don't think that it's one they would not use an induction coil or anti side tone coil there wasn't the need for it so they, they save a bit of money there probably wasn't the uh, the regulator so that was done away with various things were changed but anyhow this is the actual phone any questions please ask and um, yeah we'll give this a little run don't know where I got this from I can't imagine it came from a boot cell I think I probably bought this off of eBay in these in those days phones were easier to pick up now they virtually cost an arm and a leg in some cases and also once again as a warning make sure the phone you're bidding for is the genuine article and not um, a modern reproduction which is quite possible so obviously check for various things have a look at all the little pictures that go with it pictures of the base see if the base is shown there you can learn quite a lot and see the numbers on it see the labels that are stuck on there or any other interesting bits anyway i'm going to shut up now i've been talking too long so thanks for watching any questions please ask and i'll get back to you i'll probably find another lamp to put up next so once again thanks for watching thanks for putting up with my ramblings thank you